It's Comedy Week here on YouTube. So my question today is, why do we laugh? There are around seven billion people on the planet. We are separated by language, race, religion, custom, hairstyles, and all the rest of it. But we all have one thing in common. We all laugh. Why? Well, let's start at the beginning. You will notice that a newborn baby cries immediately. A lot, in fact. And yet, the same infant doesn't start to laugh until it's four or five months old. The joyous, heartwarming sound of a gurgling, laughing baby is, in fact, its attempt to communicate with its own laughing mother, or maybe a bunch of cooing, dribbling aunties. And that is the crux of why we laugh. We are trying to communicate. Our relations in the primate world laugh as well. If you tickle a gorilla, I don't actually recommend that you do tickle a gorilla, but if you did, you would find that it laughs. It emits a sort of low guttural panting noise. It's communicating its desire to play, same as children do. It's actually as children that we laugh the most, between the ages of about five and six, three or four hundred times a day. That's because everything is new, everything is interesting, everything is absurd and funny. As we become older, we become the jaded, cynical, embittered specimen that you see before you now, and we don't laugh as much. What would make me laugh just a little bit is if you subscribe to this channel by clicking on my T-shirt here. <laughs> Laughter in adulthood is used as a sort of social glue. If you watch your favorite sitcom by yourself, you will find it amusing, and you might even chuckle a bit, but you won't do the full R-O-F-L-P-M-S-L laughing thing. If you watch it with other people, you will find that laughter is contagious. It's a bit like yawning, and you all become embroiled in a sort of laughter loop that you're sharing. It's been demonstrated that in social situations, you are 30 times as likely to laugh as you are when you're on your own. And remarkably, even laughing gas is found to be more potent when you share it with people. What we actually laugh at, obviously, depends on our personal taste in comedy. But a recurring theme amongst all those hilarious jokes that your mates tell down the pub is the so-called incongruity theory. This is where an apparently familiar story is heading towards a predictable punchline, but all our sense of logic and familiarity with storytelling is thwarted at the last minute with an incongruous punchline. This can actually generate a proper guffaw. In actual fact, adults do most of their laughing at things that really aren't very funny. Research by people who study the science of laughter, they're called gelatologists, was conducted in America over a 10-year period in shopping malls and looked at 1,200 occurrences of natural laughter. Most laughter, it was discovered, followed things that weren't particularly humorous at all. They were quite inane statements like, hey bud, where have you been? Or how did the results of your tests turn out? These are not gut-busting gags, but it was found that the laughter was a sort of punctuation point at the end of sentences. It was a way of people bonding. We're not consciously laughing on these occasions, we just do it naturally, which is why it's so difficult to fake laughter. If I say, what's Rupert Bear's middle name? The. Ha 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 ha. You know that's not a real laugh. It's a bit fake, and to be honest, fake laughter is a bit creepy. Genuine laughter consists of a series of variations on short, vowel-like sounds repeated roughly every 210 milliseconds. And it sounds like this. <laughs> laughter is not always a funny business. There is a dark side to laughter. There is the jeering laughter of ridicule. The great minds of Aristotle and Plato feared the power of laughter. They thought it could undermine authority. They even believed it could ultimately overthrow the state. We've all heard that laughter is the best medicine. Is that true? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work with things like verrucas and boils and the consumption. However, when we laugh, our brains release those feel-good chemicals like endorphins and dopamine, and those do have a beneficial effect. They lower blood pressure, they relieve stress, they give your whole immune system a bit of a lift. If you've ever felt exhausted after a lengthy bout of the giggles, well, you should, because you've had a massive workout. Obviously, your face muscles 
are all stretched, but so are your legs, so is your back, your diaphragm, your respiratory system gets a good going over as well. It's been calculated that laughing 100 times is the equivalent of 15 minutes on an exercise bike or 10 minutes on a rowing machine, neither of which are funny. So you can sweat and suffer with a psychotic personal trainer or fitness instructor, or you could go down the pub with your mates and laugh at some terrible jokes. I'll go to the gym. No, I'm kidding, I'm going to the pub. Well, that's our contribution to Comedy Week on YouTube. We have another one, in fact. We have Tamandra doing the mathematics of comic timing. Click up here for that. And elsewhere, there's loads of other funny people doing funny stuff, saying funny things. It's all funny.